Oh, no, it's excitement, to be honest. I mean, uh, this is a really young team that, uh, you know, we're always going to get in some challenges playing another young side who were, you know, really strong and hard at the footy in the second half. It was clearly a game of two halves, but, uh, look, I was really proud of the boys in the, in the last bit to hang on. You know, uh, that was a game we've been in those games this year where we've come from behind and run over sides. It's almost, uh, you know, sometimes almost impossible to stop that type of run on. And to our boys' credits, they were able to do that, get hold of the ball and, you know, convert a couple of times when we needed to. <laughs> no, you can have a beer if he likes. He can, have, he, can have, he can have a beer for sure. Uh, now you know why I was a little bit cranky last week when he wasn't in the side. Uh, look, he's been fantastic for us all season, and uh, you know he's he's an experienced player who's absolutely got some composure. And we haven't got a lot of those boys in our team just yet, and you know he led the way really strongly in the last quarter. He clearly wanted us to win. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't really thinking, to be honest, but um, it seemed to stick in the end. And um, yeah, happy to take the mark and call the thing, call the game down. How was the feeling out there um, amongst the players when they were really, I mean, that, that second half they were coming so hard, was it you know, just to, to keep your composure and, and try and stay them off? Yeah, it was obviously, um, as Kenny said, um, it builds a lot of character within the group. Um, probably in the past, I know we don't really like to talk about the past, but. That, probably ga that game probably would have slipped away, but um, a credit to the group and the work they've put in over the summer. Like, it's just unreal the way they can react. And even when a team's um, fighting back like St Kilda did, um, we were able to edge in front and, and win the game in the end. Ken, I guess every game is a learning curve for this particular team, but do you think you can use that win tonight as a springboard to something else? Because your finals destiny is you can remain from your own hands now. Yeah, look, our whole season's been up to us a bit. You know, it's been up to what we want to achieve from it. And yeah, look, right now we're, we're in a really, really strong position ourselves. But, you know, we know how hard this competition is and we know that if we don't work as hard as we have again tonight and, you know, for, for longer periods than tonight even, we'll get ourselves in trouble. But I, I almost don't want to talk about the outcome myself. I just want to talk about, you know, all the time I always say, we'll get what we deserve, you know. And, and tonight, in the end, we deserve to win the game. Yes, it was a game of two halves, but... You know, at the end, we were, we were brave and strong and, uh, you know, held on when we needed to. I've been really thrilled with Matthew Lovey's game. He was pretty influential, particularly in that first half. Yeah, we, well, we had a lot of good players in that first half, particularly. And, and Loves, look, he's shouldered the ruck for us for a long period of time now since uh, redo has been out. So we ask him every week to do a lot of uh, a lot of minutes on the ground. And, uh, you know, lucky he's got his, his, his big man here, his sidekick that jumps in and helps out for a few minutes. But, you know, as you said, Loves has been incredible for us uh, to, to carry the load. He's a, you know, he's a young ruckman himself, and he's just finally, I think, starting to believe he can play at this level. Yeah, what did you put that, the amazing role of Ursula down to? I mean, in the first half, you, you had all the running, uncontested ball, and just free-wheeling, and it just was almost a complete role reversal in the second half. But what did you put that down yeah, I think it started in the in the middle a little bit. I think it was the contested ball stuff and the clearances that St Kilda really got on top of. And you know, and they've got some really good players, Lenny and uh, you know uh, Del Sando and Montagna got going, Stevens got going, and look, they've got a champ up forward, and uh, you know, he just keeps presenting up to them and uh, making them hard work and dangerous. When that happens, Ken, uh, what's your instruction to the players? Is it to slow the tempo down, or what do you have to do to reestablish? Um, yeah, the, I suppose the important thing to not we just couldn't get hold of the ball in the second half. You know, you look at the numbers; they were. You know, they had a lot of the footy and we just could not get hold of the ball. So as much as we would have liked to have taken the edge off it and slow it down, we probably just couldn't get hold of the ball. And that was St Kilda's good play, not more than anything else. We were trying our hardest to, to get hold of them, but we just couldn't. Uh, we're, you know, Yeah, we'd like to slow it down. Importantly, when you go forward, you need to kick a couple too to probably put some more scoreboard pressure. And we were able to do that at a couple of times when they were... And we probably held them off for a bit longer than they would have liked, and that probably helped in the end. So you deserve to win. I guess you did, but do you feel a sense of luck in seeing that? Um, is there a slice of oh, I suppose there is in every game of footy, but again, it's the scoreboard will be a result of the four quarters, and that's what I keep telling the boys. It'll it'll be the four quarters, and uh, look, we obviously done enough over the course of four quarters to, to be in front. So I reckon we deserve to win, uh, and I'm sure if had it been the other way around and they they win, they would have absolutely deserved to win by a point. But when you get a game like that where there is two clear halves of dominance by each side, it's you know it's, it's an unusual game, isn't it, AFL football? When you think how can you go from being there and the other side, that's that's just the level of the competition you play against. They're they're as good as every team's as good as each other on a day and, and in a moment. Yeah, you talked a bit about Hamish Harwood sort of dealing with tag, sort of really um, improving that second half. And to sort of Jones um, after probably being beaten early on. Um, what was your thoughts on how he sort of really 
Oh, you know, learning curve again for Hammer. He's going to cop a bit of that. Travis cops a bit of that. Brad Ebert some chance to get a bit of that. And Chad, this bloke gets a, you know, he gets a run with player. Stanley goes to him right at the start of the game. So, I mean, they all get things like that they have to deal with. And I think look, every experience we get clearly now where we are as a football club will be good for us in the long run. And we know they're all bonuses for us and uh, we have to make the most of them. Made some bold decisions at selection this week. How do you assess the impact of Colman and Mitchell and putting the speed on the game? I guess that you wanted on this deck. I was really happy with we made Mitchell sub. Yeah. Come on and had a really significant influence. I mean, his effort in that one run, where he's run probably 120 metres just to get the ball out of bounds in the forward line. Mitchell's been, you know, he's... He, He's a rookie list player who's been desperate to play AFL footy. He's 23, so he's been really keen to come and play. He's had a significant impact at the start of the year. I would like to think that he can have a you know a pretty big impact for us for the back half of the year as well. So really pleased with him. And Sam, I mean Sam, I'm really proud of. He's you know he got through the whole draft. We end up getting him in the, the pre-season, and uh, we get really lucky, I reckon, because we're an 18-year-old boy. He doesn't turn 19 until the 20th of December, I think. So he's the youngest player in the comp. So he's had three games this year, and if we can get another two or three games into Sam this year, he's going to be a very good player for us in the future. Yeah, I'd like to think we can keep him in if we can. That's 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 something we want to do. We want to give him some more game time, and we're prepared to go there because we know right now what we're trying to achieve as a club, and that's uh, you know uh, give some experiences to young people who, at some stage in their careers, are going to be strong players in a, a successful side for us. So we've got to we've got to be able to swallow a little bit of that and, and put him in at the right times. And we think tonight we made a good decision on him. Yeah, Jakey's. I mean, Jake's played. What are we up to? Round 17, so he's 16. Jake's played, I think, 14 games, maybe 15 games. It's been an unbelievable effort that his first season has been, and we've we've tried to look after him a little bit because we know he's important to our pressure in the forward half. And yeah, again tonight he was, you know, he struggled to probably run the game out the way he would have liked to and have an influence that we would like. We might give him a rest. I don't know. We'll we'll look at that through the week and and then see where we go. Which ones? Monfries has kicked 25, I reckon. Wingard's kicked 31. Robbie Gray's kicked one goal four tonight. I reckon you've probably been a bit tough on them. I, you know, I don't like. To, I'll defend them because I think you've been a bit hard on them. Our small forwards have been really good, and, and yes, Jake. Jake was down tonight, but over the course of the season, he's been really strong for us. So I think our small forwards. We actually think it's a real strength of ours at the moment where our small forwards can actually get some goals. And as I said, Robbie tonight could have been could have been anything. And Wingard, I think, has been in all Australian for more year. Ken, you basically come back into the competition in Brisbane next week. What's going to be your message to the players to avert another crisis like tonight? Or close crisis like tonight? Oh, no, no, we, we prepare well this week. We'll train well again this week. And we'll know that the competition, as I keep saying, it's really hard. It's really even. And we've got to play at our best. And uh, we, we're going to get Brisbane coming down to want to play against us. And they're coming off the back of a couple of good wins. And I'm sure they'll be really up and about for the game. That's AFL footy. We've just got to make sure we prepare really well today. Forget about today, after tonight it's all over and we've just got to get ready for the next game and prepare ourselves so we can compete hard again next week. Is there any special message to train over three quarter time? Or just obviously just had to go, just had to stay with Rewalt and just run the game out? And yeah, no, he's, a, there. he's a star in it, Rewalt. I mean, rewalt has been a great player for a long period of time and Jacko knew he had a big job tonight but Look, I thought he, uh, you know, he hung in there manfully for us, but he's playing on one of the elite ones in the competition. Again, what a great experience for Jacko, I think, to, to learn how hard that some of the greats really can run. So, you know, he, he, he tried, to, tried his absolute best to hang on for us, and uh, I like the way he went about it.